Okay, let's check out enemy and see how it works. Download a sample like Pirate Pig, and you can use enemy test to try it out. So out of the box, you can do something like Nico, which is a, uh, it's a, it's a runtime for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and it builds right away. And this is using native code for the rendering, but it's using a VM for the script. It's really great for testing quickly, but more practically, you might use Flash if you want to put it on a line. And here's our same game running in Flash Player. You can do enemy test HTML5 if you want to do it with Canvas. And this is the same game. I can open up an inspector and see we have a have Canvas elements. This is really HTML5. I could also do Mac. Um, so by default, it'll build for C++ instead of Nico, but you also, if you wanted to, you could do enemy test Mac dash Nico. So you have you have two choices for the desktop in that way. Um, actually, more practically speaking, I, I also could do enemy test Mac dash Air, and if I wanted to do it through Flash uh, and Adobe Air for the packaging, that's one other way, that's another valid way of building something for the desktop. As you can tell, it's a little bit slower, but it does work. So this is running in Adobe Air. If I jump over to another platform, here it is running in Windows, but I can show you enemy test Windows. And it will build with Visual Studio. Or here it is running in Linux. In Linux, I can do enemy test Linux for 32-bit. Or 64-bit. And uh, let's see what else. What are we missing? Oh, mobile, of course. So I could do something like enemy test BlackBerry. And it's going to go ahead and install it on my playbook here. So installing, copying the data over. And here we go. Here it is running on the playbook. Same game. I have it set up for portrait. So actually, I should probably rotate this. So here it is running on portrait, same game. Um, <laughs> trust me, uh, it's working. So this is a native native BlackBerry application, working just fine. And uh, let's see what else. Oh, so you could do enemy test Android. I don't have an Android device plugged in right now, but it'll go ahead and build. It'll call the Java process. And then it's going to get upset because I don't have a device connected, waiting for device. I could do iOS, but I don't have a device connected. I could do iOS simulator. And this will go ahead and build it for the Xcode iOS simulator. And uh, you can see here when you're built for C++, it takes a little while the first time through. After that, it's cached, so it goes very quickly. Um, every time that I tested enemy test Mac or enemy test Windows, um, that was all, you know, that was a normal command. Uh, C++ automatically caches, caches those files. Um, the other thing to know, I can show, show to you on Windows. The other thing to know, so there's an enemy setup command. Oh. Is it running? Yes, it's running. I'll come back. So there's an enemy setup command, and so you can use that for each target. So if you do something like Flash, it'll say, hey, you don't need to do anything for Flash. But you could do Setup Air if you want to do Adobe Air. You could do Cordova if you want to set up Apache Cordova. You could do Windows, and it'll ask you if you want to download and install Visual Studio, and it'll help you do that. Uh, set up BlackBerry. It'll ask if you want to get the BlackBerry native SDK, and then if you want help configuring a device. Um, so the Setup command is, is very important for uh, just making sure that you install the extra tools, the BlackBerry Native SDK or Visual Studio or the Android SDK uh, that you need for each platform. Enemy Setup Mac will tell you to go ahead and download Xcode. Enemy Setup Linux, I believe, will install some packages. But... Oh, it's set up for Ubuntu 12.04. So I'm running 11.04 right now in this VM, 
but so IA32 libs multi arch doesn't exist in Ubuntu 1104, but it would exist in 1204, um, which you normally would have as a de desktop OS. I use an older OS for building the enemy builds. Um, so here it is running in the simulator. And uh, you can also use the BlackBerry simulator. So there's a lot of options here. Um, so let me see if I can go ahead and just give that list to you. Might as well. Um, the list of all the things you can do. So, uh, is this zoom up? All right. So you can enemy test, and you can do Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, BlackBerry, WebOS, Flash, HTML5. And you can use dash air, dash cpp, dash nico, dash html5 if you want to specify the technology. So depending on the platform, there may be multiple options. So I showed on Mac. So, uh, so you can use dash air if you want to use flash publishing. You can use dash nico if you want to use the nico runtime. You could use dash html5 like if you wanted to do html5 to mobile instead of native. But the default in, in all instances where possible is going to be native C++ and OpenGL because that's what performs the best. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of options here, and this is the exact same project. Um, I'll go ahead and open it up, uh, go to my PyroPig solution. So there's a few editors you can use. I use MonoDevelop. It works well on Linux. It works well on Mac. Um, Flash Develop is also a popular choice for Windows. So in here, this is the source code for PyroPig. It's fairly straightforward. Of course, you can look at the code yourself. Uh, this, this really is the same code on every platform. So I have some conditional code for Android. This is just for a back button. PyroPig right now has no way to, to end. And so without killing the application on back, it actually would never, ever stop on Android. And so you'd hit that point where you can't make any moves and it would be a sad thing. Um, so I, I make it kill on back button so you can get a fresh start. Uh, inside the game, everything again is all cross-platform. I have some ifjs type conditionals. That's to reduce the amount of the amount of work that HTML5 is doing because alpha tweens and uh, you know different things like that kind of kind of wear on it. Not on a desktop browser but on a mobile browser it really really wears it out. So I have some, some conditionals in there to help improve the performance. Other than that, though, this is the same code. And so I was showing you on the terminal before, but I have a nice drop down right here. So I could choose something like Release Mac, and I could hit Command-Alt-Enter to build, go ahead and test. I also really like this flexibility for, uh, you know, for working on mobile. So I can test things on the desktop and then test on mobile, and I'm not required to do that the whole time. Um, but that was a quick walkthrough on how to build projects for enemy. It's very fun, uh, and there's a lot of options here, so you can decide what works best for you. And I hope you enjoy this video.